Right, very good morning everyone. Uh, thank you Deej for uh, such an interesting opening. Uh, so setting up the expectations for a very, very big day. Right, um, so thank you all for coming here today. Um, my name is Kin and I'm the founder of Cassandra. Uh, our team actually has the privilege of being the only premium partner for Google based in Malaysia. And we specialize in an area called customer profiling. It's a fancy term for saying that um, based on the digital fingerprints that you leave behind, we're actually able to calculate your propensity to buy something. And this, I feel, is able to allow a lot of brands to match supply and demand in real time. So uh, let me just jump very, very quickly. In a nutshell, um, since we are a Google partner, uh, give me five minutes to share maybe a bit about the Google stack. Let me just turn on the highlight. Oh, sorry. Right, um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll ask a very simple question. How many of you have heard of something called Google Analytics? Okay, brilliant. Okay. And um, so, where's my mouse? Okay, okay. Right, so most people would have heard of something called uh, Google Analytics. How many of you have heard of something called Surveys 360? Nobody. Okay, I guess that's good. So fundamentally, uh, most brands globally um, typically would like to do something called market research. To do this, uh, many of uh, you would have probably run something called primary research. It's a fancy term for saying that you're planning to run a survey. One of the challenges that people face when running surveys is that there's usually not enough participants. So basically, uh, Google is now introducing a new product that will allow you to target your audiences and allow them to participate in your research directly. For example, I could target ladies speaking Arabic in Bristol and ask them where do they typically go for when they're looking for halal food. And immediately I will be able to get a list of people participating in that particular initiative so that I'm able to fuel my market intelligence. Okay, so this is uh, something very interesting for Google. Uh, next, there's something called Attribution 360. Uh, maybe can I have a show of friends? How many of you have advertised on TV or radio or on a billboard before? Quite a number of you, right? So one of the challenges that uh, a lot of people face is the fact that after spending on TV, radio, and even on newspapers, how do I determine whether or not this particular initiative generated a sale? Okay, so um, Gartner, a research company, has already indicated that by 2018, um, 40% of all media budgets will start to become digital. But this means that close to 60% is still across traditional channels. Okay? And Google is kind of like a bloodhound. They're going where the money is. Okay? So basically with this attribution platform, they are basically saying that each time you show an advertisement on TV or radio, they will calculate the propensity of it influencing a sale across digital touch points. So, for a lot of companies that are what we call digital first, people like Uber, people like Expedia, people like Viator, they are now able to obtain visibility on marketing spend that happened across offline channels and how it is now contributing to your bottom line on digital channels. Then, uh, there's something called Optimize 360. Um, maybe, maybe another short How many of you are familiar with this term called an AB experiment or a multivariate experiment? Brilliant, okay. So Optimize is basically a free tool that allows you to accomplish the exact same thing. Some of you may have played with things like Optimizely, Adobe Test and Target, or Oracle Maximizer. So Optimize basically comes in two flavors. There is a free version and an enterprise version. And fundamentally, um, as you know, Google enjoys releasing free products to make sure that the industry is able to, number one, test and evaluate very, very quickly whether or not they like it. And if they do, they are then able to start running enterprise considerations and prove whether or not their hypothesis is running correctly. So um, maybe I'll just jump very quickly. When we help our customers, we typically move them around across three levels of maturity. The first level is where we actually, number one, identify what has transpired so that we're able to tell you whether or not you did well or whether or not this thing is simply outstanding. But most brands will say that that's not enough. 
If you knew something has already happened, can you actually tell me what's going to happen next? So that's something called predicting an outcome. And in an ideal situation, if you already knew that something's going to happen, should you be able to tell me what I should do in order to take advantage of the scenario? I would be able to find that very, very useful. So we typically take all of our customers across this journey. So in a nutshell, uh, let me just show you very, very, very quickly. Um, I'll just share the use case that we intend to address. Fundamentally, most of the customers that we assist attract millions of people every day. And one of the phenomena that we've uh, observed is the fact that out of 100 people who arrive, maybe only two or three will decide to buy something. Okay? And most brands will say that that's a fact of life. Can't really do anything to change that. So, one of the things that we've observed is the fact that each time someone chooses to interact with your website or your app, they leave what we call digital fingerprints behind. We are actually able to use AI machine learning to understand their propensity to buy something. And this allows you to match supply and demand real time. So, what does this really mean? Google actually wants you to ask very simple questions. Based on the kind of people that you're attracting, what kind of challenges do you think they face? And based on their challenges, what do you think would be the most suitable product to win their consideration? But more importantly, based on the people that you're attracting, which are the ones that seem to be driving revenue? The moment you start answering these kind of questions, the way you choose to interact with your customers will start to change. So let me just share a very... Oh. Sorry, my PowerPoint here. When a million people came to their website, one million people will see the exact same thing. But now, we can actually identify profiles in real time. Let's just say that this is an expatriate couple interested in culture and outdoors. <coughs> well, guess what? We will crunch with statistical certainty to deliver the most suitable narrative to win their consideration. If you now notice that the behavior has changed, this is a family unit with children. While they may share similar characteristics, for example, their love for outdoors, they seem to have a clear affinity for cute furry animals. Again, our duty is to make sure that we put our best foot forward to increase and maximize the likelihood of consideration. So basically, how does this really work? Let me just explain. Um, whenever someone actually arrives on your website or your app, uh, let me just turn on the highlighter. So, whenever someone actually comes to your website or app, um, Google actually checks their entire user journey. For example, at 3.45 p.m., this person actually landed on the landing page of this particular airline. Then he decided to go through an itinerary with two adults. He was contemplating to travel to Korea, Japan, and Vietnam. And after that, uh, after looking at the prices, he felt that he could get a better deal. So this is why he decided to go to the first page. So fundamentally, when we are able to plot behavior over time, we have effectively built something called a customer journey. So why is this thing important? Because traditionally, many of your teams have invested in what we call data scientists, who would typically do something called an analysis. And one of the outcomes is something called a customer profile. For example, this person, this gentleman called Jack, uh, based on the analysis, it seems as though most of his itineraries are attracting locations that are experiencing warm weather conditions. Uh, it seems as though most of them are near beaches, and it's quite clear that he's looking for a romantic interlude. So after we do something called machine learning, we realize that this guy is a cheapskate. He's trying to find the cheapest possible permutation to impress his newfound companion. And uh, although he thinks that the lady is quite lovely, uh, his boss doesn't seem to agree. This is why he can only get leave approved for two or three days. So why are profiles important? Because Jack, is actually very different from this girl called Angel. Angel, on the other hand, she's planning to travel alone, and it seems as though most of her destinations are alluding to a fine dining experience. And based on her time of travel, all of her destinations are experiencing what we call winter conditions. After we do machine learning, we realize that her budget is easily four to five times <laughs> that of Jack. 
She is what we call a high net worth customer. Okay. Jack, on the other hand, not only is he on a budget, he's going to be splitting the funds two ways with his newfound companion. Okay. And as we can see, uh, Jack may only have two or three days to blow, but fundamentally, Angel over here, she's clearly going to be spending more than a week. If in the past, right, typically when someone decides to buy something, they typically will have five or seven interactions before they decide. If we knew in advance what this person wanted to buy, and share the most suitable option to win your consideration, we're probably able to close this within two or three steps. This is what we call conversion optimization. Okay. So, how does this work? Fundamentally, uh, what we've noticed is the fact that uh, many brands such as yourselves, they've already begun embarking on a journey called a digital transformation. How many of you have websites and apps? Can I have a show of hands? Well, almost everyone, right? So, one of the interesting things that we've noticed is the fact that all these websites and apps, right, typically would require you to invest in something called a content management system. It is used to define and render what you see on the screen on your website and on your app. So, most of these content management systems, right, typically have a workflow. They're not simple solutions. Right? In order to undertake a transaction, they typically force you to sign in or register. The moment I identify your personality, I now have information related to your contact details. And basically, based on the kind of things that you're buying, we now actually have a transaction history of your purchases. So while most of these things are typically seen on the screen, rarely are those data points ever ingested by your analytics platforms. And this is a huge disconnect. This is why, um, for those of you who may have had a hand doing digital marketing, this is typically the kind of reports that you'll get. When we talk about digital marketing analytics, most of the time, all of your reports are based on URLs or screens, and typically, you will encounter scenarios like this. <laughs> Sorry, my screen is hanging again. Based on the destination stream, 
we are then able to identify what you intend to do. And we can actually even ascertain the amount of money you intend to spend and your primary purpose of traveling. So why is this important? Because if we are able to identify the profile, we have effectively now assessed something called demand. And in order to take full advantage of this, we actually need to build models that represent supply. For example, in an airline, a product is typically a combination of an origin and a destination. We can onboard first party information related to satisfaction of the products. Because we are already capturing e-commerce transactions, we know how much money is being made. But more importantly, when we start joining information related to their supply chain, we are now able to ascertain the amount of money they are actually making based on their costs. But let me draw your attention over here. What is important now is that we are now able to correlate the relationship between the product and the people who seem to buy. And we are also able to identify look-alike destinations, meaning that, for example, if you were planning to buy a trip to Bali, and it seems as though that particular flight was sold out, most airlines would give up. But if I knew that you were planning to travel to a beach destination and you intended to blow three days, and you only had 200 pounds to blow, I can identify many other destinations that are able to fulfill the exact same experience. And this allows us to plan what we call a next best action, so that we are able to win your consideration. Sorry. Why don't I just show you the demo? Uh, I think this will make more sense. Let me just drag this screen. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to share with you an example that will not hang. <laughs> so fundamentally, um, this is a sample data set that I joined for a mobile operator. Uh, onboarded billing information, CRM information, all the way to behavior expressed across websites and mobile apps. So now, uh, let me ask questions like this. Show me high net worth customers, and I'm going to qualify that as anyone who spent more than a hundred pounds a month, roughly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, service, service. Let me now sort them based on the kind of services that they consume, and uh, immediately I will have visibility. So, uh, as you can see on the screen, typically if you're part of a marketing team, usually we make decisions based on something called intuition meaning it's an educated guess, okay? But if, let's say, you have actual access to that, let's just assume that these are people living in London, okay? It seems as though, based on this particular interest graph, there seems to be a lot of interest in chatting services. This means that, as a mobile operator, we are now able to do a bit of homework. We'll probably partner people like WhatsApp, Viber, or even WeChat, to make sure that when someone actually comes to our booth, we can talk about things that they enjoy using so that we can now discuss why you need to upgrade your data plan. Let's assume someone like Samsung hears about it, so they'll definitely get very excited. They'll probably hear something like this. Bro, excellent event. You know what? I'm going to be launching a new device called the Note 11, and um, I want to make sure that across all your booths, we actually have this device available as part of the narrative. So clearly this guy is fishing for a partnership, and most of these partnerships will result in a contract being signed. So just before they sign, his big boss calls him all the way from Korea and he says, Bro, I've noticed you've been quite hardworking of late. Well, thank you, boss. Uh, but before we sign to the new partner, can you just ask them a very simple question? Sure, boss, what should I ask? Based on their existing customer base, whom amongst their clientele do you think may actually want to consider switching to a Samsung device? So most mobile operators will actually find it very challenging to answer this. But because we've joined all the dots together, we are actually able to identify the devices present on the mobile operator's network in real time. Let's just focus only on people who own Android devices because these people tend to churn. As I set this criteria, the visibility changes. Earlier, we have interest in chat, but now it seems as though there's a fair bit of interest in music. And this is why this player is now partnering with people like Spotify and even rekindling relationships with people like Warner and Universal to cater to this interest. So let's say now the last player is a dating app provider. He waltzes into the room and he says, Bro, you know what? I'm the leader in the market. I typically charge everyone. But just for you, I'm willing to give it for free. Wow, for free? Sure, bro, that's fine. Well, uh, just hear me out. Um, we're only willing to give it for free to the ladies. Oh, 
Okay, that's one. Why is that? Well, we're actually a regional player, and one of the things that we observe in other markets is the fact that whenever we give the ladies free entry, the gentlemen or the blokes are more than willing to pay. So since we're a for-profit organization, let's make sure we can squeeze blood out of the rock. Okay, no worries, let's just check it out. How many ladies you have in the list? Again, as we set different criteria, the visibility changes. Earlier, we have interest in chat. Then we have interest in music. But now it seems as though there's a lot of interest in religion. So mind you, uh, this is a sample data set that comes from my country, which is Malaysia. And uh, most of the sisters over there are predominantly Muslim. Okay? So knowing this information, what should we do next? We'll probably need to partner with people who offer things like apps to locate nearby mosques or even things like Sharia compliant boyfriends. Okay? Simply because if we are able to assess the intention and interests of our customers and if we take the time to choreograph a suitable narrative, we will definitely win very, very consistently. So most people would say, um, Putting people into buckets doesn't really seem to solve the problem. I know as a marketing team, uh, I would say that uh, it's easier to just think of someone as someone interested in dating. It's easier to think of someone as someone who's interested in music. But just because I'm a religious person doesn't mean that I'm not interested in music, you see. And this is why we actually need to build something called a unified view of the customer. We need to allow you to zoom in into individual profiles. We know what you've bought, what you've recently expressed interest in, and more importantly, how to reach out to you. When we expose this in real time, you are now able to curate a narrative and respond while the intention is still hot. And this is typically the kind of solutions that we build for our customers. Okay, so let me just jump back to the slide. Hopefully the hang today. Everyone's very quiet. Am I speaking too fast? Okay. Right, so let me just jump. Um, okay, so. Yes. So, why do we bother doing all this? Uh, basically, with Google technology, what they're trying to say is very simple. In the past, if you wanted to know what someone was doing, you literally have to look over their shoulder and stare at what they're doing on the screen. But with Google platforms, you are now able to observe billions of profiles in real time. Why? Because someone who is looking for a tree-hugging experience, and someone looking for a spiritual retreat, and someone who's looking for a team-building experience, they all want to hear different things. And one of the important options that you need to keep in mind is the fact that all these profiles that you build, you are able to share this natively across multiple Google platforms. How many of you have ran an AdWords campaign before? Brilliant. How many of you use something called DoubleClick? Some of you, okay. How many of you are publishers that use uh, DoubleClick for publishers? Okay, none, okay. So fundamentally, when you push all these audiences into these platforms, it basically means that you're able to introduce traditional criteria that your marketing team uses to qualify an audience. So for example, if let's say I was someone planning to sell an iPhone, okay, if I knew that someone has just bought an iPhone, would I still sell him another iPhone? Or would I sell him things that he may need after buying an iPhone? Typically we know that the battery always runs out of power. So if I knew he just bought an iPhone, Rather than selling an iPhone, I would immediately perhaps consider sharing him a battery pack. I will start selling him perhaps the cover for his mobile device. And all these data points cannot be used as part of your campaigns, simply because you are able to have visibility across what we call the customer journey. So once you start doing all of this, one of the things that we realize our customers considering is the fact that other brands may not actually be interested in your profile. For example, when we work with people like AirAsia, they actually know that during Christmas, 20,000 people are going to be arriving in Bali. Who would find these things useful? Hotels operating in Bali, tour agents operating in Bali. In fact, even Uber and people like Grab, who operate fleets of uh, cars for transportation, if they knew, for example, that 70% of the people arriving are families with young children, the composition of the vehicles present 
near the airport will also start to change. And this is very, very important. Why? Because fundamentally, data allows you to introduce new ancillary revenue streams for consideration. So most people will be quite insular. They will be quite inward looking. They'll say, screw everyone else. Let's just make sure that we start selling more effectively first. I want to cross sell and upsell very, very effectively and prove to my team that it works. But then some other teams will say, okay, um, I've made my money, but my boss has given me a new mandate. We need to generate non-traditional sources of income. So this is where a new option comes into play. There's something called affiliate marketing. Uh, let me just give an example. Some of you may have booked a hotel room from Hilton before directly, but nowadays we're all cheapskates. We typically buy it from places like booking.com, hotels.com, or even places like Expedia. So fundamentally, it's the exact same room, exact same day, exact same breakfast, but the cost is totally different. And on top of this, if let's say you choose to buy from hotels.com, Hilton actually has to pay booking.com a commission. Okay? So, how does this work? This can only happen if the person selling is actually more confident in doing this than the actual principle itself. And this comes with an unfair advantage. That unfair advantage, my friends, is data. They actually have an understanding of intention so clearly that they are able to match the most suitable supply and outbid the original person owning the inventory. Okay? And most of the brands that we work with attract literally millions of people every day. They have a clearer idea of what you will buy than the agencies who are currently servicing you. And this is literally going to disrupt the way the industry will play the game in the next four to five years. Then of course, some people will say, I want to squeeze blood out the rock. They introduce this concept called a third-party data marketplace. For example, um, if let's say there's a new device coming onto the market, it's going to be called the iPhone 11, most of the time, Apple would run a survey and engage people like Nielsen to run primary research to identify locations that may be suitable to run the event. So typically what will happen is they will ask about 100 people, they interview them, and then they will make a guess. But if I say I worked with someone like O2, immediately I can identify what phone you're using, how long you've been actually holding this device, and more importantly, where you are at different times of the day. I can now actually throw back a question. Bro, rather than telling you where those people are, could I now ask you when you intend to run this particular event? If you intended to do this in the morning, perhaps Heathrow would be the best location for your consideration. But if let's say you're planning to do it in the evening, perhaps this area called Lancaster Square would be a more suitable location because we're able to identify density by time of day, together with the devices that you're currently holding to actually assess your likelihood of considering a device. Okay? So, in a nutshell, um, what we're trying to say here is very straightforward. Facebook has something called uh, social graph. It means that you're able to know the relationship between person A and person B. Google has something called a device graph. They know what you're holding before accessing your services. For us, we are empowering brands to build something called an interest graph. Silicon Valley seems to coin a very, very fancy name for something very simple. It just means that if you knew what someone is going to buy soon, can you take this opportunity to make sure that you are the one that is selling something? Okay, thank you.